Hello, Mares and Stallions, it's Jay Productions here. Last time in the series, we took a look at NET Science, a filler episode with only three logos and an unknown background. Well, today we're going to take a look at WETA, a PBS affiliate in Washington, D.C. Technically, they were founded in 1952 when the freaking FCC allocated 242 channels across the United States to be used for education, and Channel 6 was one to be used in Washington, D.C. In 1953, Greater Washington Educational Television Association was formed to create original programming for Channel 26, but they hadn't gotten the green light to the network yet. During that time, they made content for WTTG, at that time a Dumont affiliate. However, on October 2, 1961, WTA TV signed on for the first time. Fast forward 30 years and they started pissing around with HDTV, something new at the time. They actually transmitted the first HD signal in the US, so not much after that. Let's get on to the thing you came for, the logos. But first let me get off this cheesy cosplay. Never really had a plan for it anyway. Whew, better. Well, what are we waiting for? The first logo they used I sadly don't have a lot on. They used it from 1961 to 1967. Quite nice in my opinion. Anyways, after they stopped wasting the universe font, they decided to make the first on-screen logo. I'm on about the Star Spangled WETA, used from 1976 to 1984. This logo symbolizes pure patriotism. I freaking love it, and it's a shame that it's super rare. You only find on YouTube throws in the middle due to a damaged cassette. So, on a night in the fourth week of February, I busted my slacking ass on the American Archives for Public Broadcasting trying to find this thing. But, around 9 o'clock that night, I checked part one of the Watergate hearings, and it was there. My second favorite logo from that company that I nearly drove myself to pure agony trying to get. I celebrated loudly until my dad went into my room to shut me up. Regardless, on to the next logo. This is called the Comet, and it was seen from 1982 until a rebrand in 1988. Here's the station ID variant with 26 next to WTA text. The quality programs you enjoy each week on WBTA 26 are made possible in part by a special programs grant from. I like this logo. The fanfare isn't a lot suiting, but it sounds nice regardless. On to the next logo, which is kind of bland. It's called The Ribbons, and it was seen from 1988 until a slightly better logo was introduced in 1991. I'd say the logo would be better if the text wasn't just a plain ass Times New Roman 12 size font used at work every day. At least shell out the effort to use the old font. Let's just get away from the size one. This next idea is called the Star Triangle, and it was used from 1991 to 1994. <laughs> Now, I don't do with this font. I'm gonna say that this one is better, simply because it looks better with a better theme. But this one has almost no animation, so it's pick your poison on this. Let's shove these aside to talk about my favorite logo from this company. It's the Zigzag W, and it was used from 1994 to 1997. There is also an inverted variant. This logo is almost perfect. The animation's very fluid and easy to follow. The music fits too. It's a shame it wasn't used for longer. I would have gave it until at least 2005 for an undated live stream. This next one is just very cheesy. I call it the Ribbons 2, and it was used from 1997 until almost 2010. And it was used from 1997 until almost 2010. That is way too long, especially for a garbage logo like this. Let's zoom on over to the last one for today. Called Blue Ribbons 3, it's still used and it has been ever since 2007. Tisk, tisk, tisk. I don't like it, Chief. It's too simple and the first ribbon's always fully formed. Disappointing end, sadly, but that's just the way WBTA wanted to go, I guess. Well, good night, my audience. You're gonna barf out some answers, kid. Do you want me to get Aiden on the line? Shit. Oh! <laughs>